Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practice from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're looking at growing your dental practice, one of the things that we're gonna help you see or ask you to consider is what drives your dental practice. And I have an incredible expert on today. Her name is Lori Owens, who's been a good friend and a regular guest here. And you're gonna see she is amazingly brilliant and get you to think about some great things. So you don't wanna miss this. Grab a pen and hit the share button. You're gonna love this. Now, a couple show notes before we get started. As you're watching this, if you have questions, add them to the feed or ask Lori questions directly. You're gonna see she's amazing at being able to get back to you because we want you to get the most out of this. Also, I encourage you to share these with your team and colleagues because a lot of times dentists listen to these, but they don't share these things with their team members and team members complain all the time or suggest, hey, look, let's get some good education for the entire team. What a great opportunity that is. So I encourage you to share. Now, my guest today, Lori, you have been a regular guest regular friend of ours you come to the act event you're a great colleague you know advisor or coaches if somebody's watching this for the first time and they've never seen you they don't know who you are tell them a little bit about who you are of course so my name is Lori Owens I'm a certified professional coder and a certified professional biller um, but I've only been in dentistry and, and that's really the full anatomy. So the AAPC offers credentialing for uh, medical billing and coding, but they don't do it just for dentistry. It's full body. So when you take those classes, they're very intimidating, but yet so valuable in knowledge. Um, so I have also been a medical biller for Dr. Michael Cohen and Robert Gottlieb here in Kenmore, Washington for 15 years until they retired and uh, decided to actually do this full time uh, with DevDent. And we want to just reach and help other practices to get what we've done and, and be able to duplicate that in their practice so they could see the same kind of success that we've had over the years. Mm -hmm. And this is a hidden world that a lot of great dentists don't know about. And you and I were just talking about that before we went on. I'm still shocked by the number of people that don't do this or haven't pursued it. And today we're going to talk about some things that will drive, you know, kind of your learning or your growth. And I love the way you think on this. And so um, give us kind of the state of the union, Lori. Just when you look at practices, you're out there, you're obviously excited about you know, changing people's lives, helping them improve their practices. But what do you see as you go around the country and go to events and go into practices? I see that case acceptance is down because of financials. Um, so I, I actually thought about, you know, what about, we see the burden of healthcare all the time about the debt that gets racked up because of healthcare, but nobody talks about the burden of dental debt. Uh, and your your mouth is the gateway to the rest of your body. And so if we can't care for that, we're going to find a decline in health care. Medicals already recognize the fact of what we do and the necessity for it. Um, and so we're behind the times in dentistry. We think that uh, we can let the patients kind of control the amount that gets charged because everyone says, I've been a patient here forever. Uh, in which I say, well, you don't go to your dental law or your medical office and say, you know, how much do I have to pay for that strep test mm -hmm. before they actually do it? Because the right. necessity is there. And we just need to be able to help our patients see the necessity and be able to access and maximize their benefits the best way we can. And I think in, in, in an admin office, that's our job. And Absolutely. this is medical billing is just another avenue to do that job. Absolutely. And I believe all my heart that you will increase your case acceptance by your willing le willingness to learn something different. Yeah, I don't believe it. I know it. I know that'll that'll happen when you when you make the commitment. Now, today we're going to talk about what drives your practice, and you have five great points. Give us kind of the thinking behind this. Sure. So, as I was thinking about talking to you today, I was thinking, you know what, driving is a learning experience. Nobody gets to be of driving age before they realize that they, there's some studying to do. There's some care that has to go into this. It, you don't just get behind the wheel and go. You have to have a manual. You have to be able to know what to do and how to react in instances. So I was thinking about, well, you know, what about, your, what about our dental practices? What's driving that and propelling them forward? Or are right. we kind of at the stoplight and never knowing where to hit the gas? And so right. I was thinking, you know, 
Act Dental is out there helping people hit the gas. Medical billing is out there for people to hit the gas. But again, if you hit the gas with a car in front of you, what's going to happen? You're going to have an accident. Yeah, nobody wants so, that. I, so I was thinking, Act Dental is the, the, the person next to you saying, don't go yet. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Your time is going to come. It's just not right now. And so when I was thinking about driving, I think you always have to have somebody in the other seat to help you along. Kind of like when you're in driving driver's ed and you're taking your car out, you don't get to do that by yourself. You right. need somebody next to you to guide you. And I believe coaching and as well as what I do in medical billing, we're just sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have somebody next to you, you think you know what you're doing and then you're going to wreck. Right. And then it's frustrating and you decide, I'm never driving again. Yeah. Well, I mean, the older you get, the more self-aware you become. And you're like, I, and, and you also realize human beings are not designed to accomplish anything by themselves. We need the help of other people, great coaches. And even as our business has grown, I've always said this, um, that I'll never live without a coach again. I just couldn't even imagine it because I sleep better. They can help you think through strategies. They can say, don't do that. Do this. I've been in your shoes or I have other businesses that have done that. And you just save hours and hours, if not days of your lives when you're able to be coached. So it's a great, Absolutely. I love the way you're thinking. So take us through the five steps. What's your first okay. step? I love it. My first step, you have to take a class or get the education behind medical billing. Um, most people, and I tell this to doctors all the time, you cannot say to your team, this is a great idea, do it, without providing them the education to do it. And again, I'm going to go back to coaches because the coaches know that right time. And so I, I love working with ACT coaches because they bring me in when it's the right time. Mm -hmm. Coming before that is just going to create despair and defeat because they don't have a proper foundation to lay the medical billing on. And so when you have a coach, they prepare the whole practice for what's coming ahead. And then other people can come in and enhance your practice. And I believe medical billing is an enhancement to your practice. If things aren't going right in your practice, medical billing will not fix that. Right. So we have to have a, the foundation, which I believe you get from your coaches, and then bring on, start adding to the cake. So your yeah. bottom base, if your bottom base is small and skinny, the top base will just fall over it. And it's just not going to matter. So I really want people to have that basis, the, the base of their practice foundation got done. And then we can build on it. The medical billing part just is, is added and complemented to the whole practice. Yeah. Uh, but you can't do that without education. It takes learning baby steps to get where you need to go, kind of driving. You take the baby steps to get where you need to be. So Absolutely. education courses and, you know, I'm, I still take classes. I still have to take more things to find out the new things that are coming. How does that, how do these other things, are they affected by these new things that we're learning? And so I still want, I don't want to ever feel like I've arrived, that I know everything and I don't have to take more classes. Yeah. I love courses. Absolutely. You want to stay hungry. I mean, that's where your curiosity is and a great, a great coach or a great class Again, you can speed up years of your life and get so much farther. But I think the important thing is just to be humble and learning. The great Pete Dawson, who passed away, unfortunately, recently, he's always said, he said, Kirk, never tell yourself you have it all figured out because you're going to realize you don't. And um, he said that the dentists that you meet that have it all figured out, they're not that much fun. So, you know, <laughs> I think just stay young, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah. take a class. And there's so, tons of yeah, classes. If people class. say, I can't find a class, they're crazy. There's classes everywhere. You can. Yes, yeah. you can. So, you know, you've got to take a class. My second thing is you've got to create a, a protocol. I don't, I would never want somebody at my course to, to think everything I've just taught you, I expect you to go back to your practice and bill next week. That's right. unrealistic as well as it's going to be, you're going to be defeated before you even start. Mm -hmm. So start with something small. What about your cone beams? Cone beams are not ever covered by dental. So right. why not send the cone beams? All of the reason of why you take them are, are uh, symptom-based. So atrophy, infection, those are all the reasons why cone beams need to be taken. 
So start small, create a list of three things that you do in the practice that you know is not going to get covered in dentistry that will help your patients in the long run. So maybe it's, uh, you're going to say cone beams, all trauma. And remember, we talked all trauma could be the baby headbutting me. Right. That's still trauma. And so we don't want our patients to, to think, oh, we have to use all our dental benefits for this because that was created by trauma. So right. thinking differently about how, how do we view trauma? So I would say cone beams, CBCTs, and, and maybe bone grafting. It's mm -hmm. very, very rare you're going to find a policy in dentistry that's going to cover bone grafting, especially in conjunction with an extraction. It just right. it doesn't occur. Right. So and let's go a layer deeper. Absolutely. Let's go one layer deeper. I think one of the things that you and I always talk about that really opened up my thinking around this is that if you can tell the story through medical codes that yeah. this the, the, the cause or where the, the, the root of the cause um, right. and its implications, that's where you really become a great integrative health partner for the patient. And you really do have to think outside of the box than traditional insurance, because this this does not go down the same road as dental insurance, right, Lori? Correct, absolutely. And you're, so you're not looking at frequency limitations. You're not looking at maximums. So mm -hmm. you know, we in dentistry we have two exams is what you get, and that's it. Uh, right. Most people don't know that the D zero one eight zero is one periodontal exam for life. You, they. How can you have one periodontal exam for life? Better be a good so one. I don't, it, I, I know. And, you know, unless you change insurances and then right. which you would get another one for life. But right. to, in, in, in Lee, you think about in your medical profession, if you break your toe, Kurt, and you have to go to the urgent care, the first thing they're going to do is an image. Mm -hmm. Now, the, he says, okay, you have a vertical and horizontal fracture. So because you waited two weeks, now you're going to have to go see the orthopedist right. because they might have to put some, uh, some pins in there. So you, now you're going to head to the orthopedist. He's going to do an exam and another x-ray. And he says, you know, I don't think I need to put pins in there, but you need to go see the podiatrist to see how this is going to affect your walking. So now you're off to the podiatrist and the podiatrist has to do an exam and another image to see exactly how this could be affecting that toe. So in medical, all three are, are gonna be covered because mm -hmm. they're all three seeing you for the, even though it's the same injury, it's still, they cannot do everything. Right. So think, if we think about that, uh, why are we relating this in our dental brain? Or why are we not relating this in our dental brain saying, my patient doesn't get if effective coverage in dentistry. Mm -hmm. It's just not effective. Right. And so why, why can't we go somewhere else, especially if their chief complaint is medical in nature? Right. So they have pain, they have an infection, they had trauma, all of those are medical based. So right. why would you not try to get that paid through medical? Totally agree. So I think sometimes we just we, we see this and it could be be that you might be billing 75% of your patients to medical. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But to start, would I tell you that ever? No. No. You, you can't think like that. The right. better you get, the more you can do. The more you can do, the more you can help, the better your patients feel because their health is better. Amen, so sister. So you've got to start somewhere and start somewhere with three things that your office does that you know it's not going to get covered by dental. And let's, let's, start doing that instead of jumping the gun and saying, oh, I'm just going to bill everything. Right. Um, most people don't realize how the overwhelmingness that will come because of that. So right. I, I recommend starting slow. Absolutely. And all you need is a couple victories when you're starting slow. Like you were telling me before we went on about this diabetic patient who just got the gap approval um, for, huh? for a treatment. I mean, those little victories are things that fuel your soul. Your patients get right. the right care that they need. And that's all you're looking for is a couple quick wins before you start trying right. to make this perfect, right? Yeah, that patient get, is going to get 18 crowns done because of the diabetes, uh, because there's so much erosion. She also has GERD. And so just that little bitty help. So now that provider is going to be paid as an in-network provider 
because they wanted to help this patient. Yeah. So I, I just, it, it, the, it's a win-win. They're helping the patient. They have approval. The medical necessity was there. That's awesome. That so, is awesome. Yeah, so good. That's so awesome. We also wanna, so number three is going to be, you need to review your health history. Your health history needs to be relevant to what you do. Not because you're using a stock um, health history from the ADA. Not saying that those are bad. But like I was telling you, I was, in, um, I was in Iowa and I said, why do you need gout on your health history? What, is, what does gout tell you that could impede their medical condition? Mm -hmm. And they're like, we don't care about gout. And I said, right. well, let's take it off of your health history and put something you do care about it in its place. So maybe you don't have, uh, do they have a family history of diabetes? Or maybe you don't have, uh, are they, were they, gestational diabetics because mm -hmm. Dr. Balin Donine has stated if you had gestational diabetes you are four times likely to become diabetic and it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when right so we just think about that right so I said if you review your health history find the relevant things your doctor says is important for him to know right and that's going to help make a change in your practice Absolutely. It's a huge thing because if you just put that as a protocol in there, you're going to find things. It's really the right thing to do, first of all. Secondly, it's mm -hmm. going to create a lot more thorough approach to helping patients more completely. So love it. All right. What's your so next our one? Number four, number four is making sure your soap notes are medical in nature. Uh, one of the funniest soap notes I got was um, X hyphen SRP hyphen I number nine hopeless. And I'm like, what is that? Exactly. Um, and I said, you, we have got to quit text messaging our, our notes. They can't be the cryptic that only people in our practice understand. And I get you're busy. I totally understand you're busy. But number one, that's what a coach would help you with. Make sure your mm -hmm. templates are correct and that you are easy to use because we don't want you to have to spend hours doing notes right. but you also cannot use your own uh, cryptic sentences and in dentistry that might have been fine but in medical they want you to lay it out why is that too hopeless what's created the hopelessness for the tooth right. was it an infection was there trauma it's kind of those simple what I call key phrases that we miss in dentistry and whatever's in dentistry, there's a lichen to in medical. So if you say tipped teeth, what if you said they're horizontally displaced? It means right. exactly the same thing. And now you have medical verbiage. Interesting. So make, make sure our soap notes. So that's why I tell people at our course, don't go backwards because you don't know the soap note back here would stand up to the clinical documentation that you know you need to have here. Yeah. So if you haven't done the treatment, have them back for a consult and put the correct verbiage in so that you can say this patient needs orthodontic treatment because they have vertically displaced teeth. Yeah. And so but if now, you're watching, yeah, if you're watching this, you're already getting a sense of this. You have to have an expert level coach or advisor in this area because just the difference in how you phrase the notes, you're talking about a lifetime of mm -hmm. you know standard of care in this and you can't figure this stuff out by yourself i wouldn't even think of that like you were talking I, I have so many great stories with you the eob reference i mean eobs are hard enough for us to look at and we look at them all right. the time but auditing an eob a lot of team members when they're charged to do something they don't even know what they're looking for and then you recently right. told us about a doctor who wasn't even getting paid on an eob and you're like i bet you i know what that is and i would have never guessed like it would have taken me five years to figure out what you suggested. So just tell us that story real quickly. Okay, so we were in New Jersey and one of the doctors brought an EOB from medical and she said, I don't know what was done wrong. And I said, you didn't do anything wrong. I said, if I could bet you money, I would say that they are missing your W-9 and that's the only reason you haven't gotten payment. And she said, no, it can't be that easy. And she said, it doesn't say anything on here that that's what it was. I said, you have to remember, as much as we have the quick notes, 
That's the same what medical does when they're denying the claim. They have a certain amount of quick notes. If they don't apply, they don't apply. They can't choose them. Right. So on her EOB, it said they allowed the amount that she charged, but then there's no payment. So mm. she said, well, I'm, so she called them right there in the course. And guess what they were missing? Her W-9. W-9. It's the only thing that prevented payment. So wow. once she, she said she never would have believed it had she not called them there at the course. It's a pretty and big so deal. she was I... so thrilled that every, yeah, I mean, you're talking a $10,000 claim that's been allowed. All they needed was verification of the W-9. That's so a very big deal. A small thing is all it takes. Kurt, I've been denied because I didn't put a zero in the code set. Period. That's the only reason. Crazy. But again, if you read the EOB, there's not, they probably don't have a quick note that says you didn't put a zero in the code set. Right. So it came back saying that it was not necessary treatment. Right. And I'm like, I, I, it was a trauma case. It was necessary treatment. Yeah. Um, and I, so when I called them, they said, well, you didn't put a zero in the code set. So again, it might be something really small that got you denied that if you just, if you let the defeat handle you or if you handle the defeat. Mm -hmm. And so it's up to us. So if you just let the defeat handle you, you're never going to do medical billing again. Amen, but if sister. you handle the defeat, you handling the defeat, you'll figure it out and you'll know how to help other people in the future. Yeah. And you'll drive your practice production up and forward and help, you'll help a lot of people. Way, so. way, 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 way up. So you're On ready top of me. for number yeah, one. I am. Go. Okay, number five, this is where a lot of people say, I, I just never thought about it. Collect everybody's medical card. Because Wait, you okay. never know. Okay, everybody. So, so what do you mean by that? Everybody. So in other words, if you have a Medicare patient come in, you know you're not a Medicare patient or you don't do right. Medicare, you're an opt-out provider, which is fine. I totally, we, I was, we were an opt-out provider too. But what if they have another medical insurance that goes with it, like a retiree plan? Mm -hmm. So most people are not collecting medical cards because they say, well, I'll collect it if I need it. Right. And I say, I'm the other way. I want you to have it. So when you need it, you don't have to bug the patient about it. And so our team, and we had a great team, they came up with a saying, they said, if there's a procedure our doctor does that we can maximize through your medical insurance, we want to make sure to have the information on hand. Did I promise you any money right there? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And so would they ever say, no, I don't want you to get me more money? No, you're no, just being they, thorough. Now they know you're, you're looking at something beyond dentistry. Right. You're looking at some, some way to help them beyond dental insurance. Mm -hmm. And it, you, everybody we said that to, we got a better health history because they now looked at that we were looking medical. So we got, nobody argued with us to fill out our health history because they said, well, I got to fill this out or they're not going to get medical benefits. Right. So right. it changed their perception of what our office did. We were no longer a periodontal office. We were the office that was looking for something that was, that was either affected by our mouth or affecting our mouth. And so we, we got much better health histories by just that. And I can't even take credit for that. My team came up with that. They were amazing with, with saying it to everybody. Yeah. If, if there's a procedure our doctor does that we can maximize through your medical insurance, we want to make sure to have the information on hand. Simple statement but made a very large impact on all the people that we were able to see. Absolutely. And so I want to share that with you so that I, I don't think our team would mind you borrowing it. Just make it your own. Have, your, have all of your team say it when they come in so that you can say, hey, we're not looking for teeth. We're looking for how this affects your health or right. we're looking at how your health is affecting your mouth. And so those are my five tips of how to, how to drive your practice towards medical billing and and taking that instruction manual and just start doing something with it because um, right. some people do have and, and some people have already had a class but they quit because maybe the w9 thing came into play and they didn't know that's what it was right. um, and so i want you to get back the get back your driver's manual and start reading it to take that test that's awesome that's what's going to give you more freedom with what you're doing with medical billing
Absolutely. Now, I always ask experts when they're on here, like what the future is going to look like in this particular, you know, space or area in dentistry. And you and I have talked about this, but give us a little sense of, I mean, this isn't going away. This is something that's going to be here for a very long time. And I don't know about you, but I don't see people getting healthier, just walking around without any disease. I mean, this is an incredible opportunity in the world of dentistry where you can provide better care have it more reimbursed fully for you know the type of care that you provide. This is an opportunity many dentists, and I would even say that if you're gonna practice in fee-for-service dentistry, you have to learn about this. This is like a non-negotiable moving forward, but would you right. agree with all those? I would say, and I, and I said it multiple times, in five years, I don't believe dental insurance will exist. Mm -hmm. I believe it will somehow be in, in, incorporated into medical, um, one thing I always tell people, do you know that there are codes, diagnosis codes that say dental caries extend on the smooth surface extending to the dentin? Who can use those codes? A dentist. A dentist can. How about right. dental caries on the pit and fissure limited to the enamel? Mm -hmm. Who could mm -hmm. use that? These codes were created for us. Right. They were not created for anybody else. So the only difference is some doctors are using them and some doctors are not. Yeah. And so they're maximizing benefits. I have an endodontist in Chicago. He's getting about three, $3,300 for $4,000 procedures for medical. Wow. Because he's really good at his notes. He makes sure that he he shows the medical necessity for the root canal treatment because if you think about what is root canal, it's an infection. Right. So if, it, if there's an infection going on, do they want that infection traveling to the other parts of their body? Absolutely no. not. Absolutely not. Laura, you are awesome. So I know. Yeah, I know that people are watching this and listening to this are going to want more information from you about this. How can somebody get a hold of you if they're listening or sure. watching this? So they can email me at Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E, at devdent, D-E-V-D-E-N-T dot com. You can also go to our website, devdent dot com. There's the list of the courses for CE courses. Um, I, I think I'll be in Cleveland and then um, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, uh, kind of all over. So whatever works best for you. We do have pre-registration fees that are the probably the lowest. I think pre-registration is four ninety nine for the first person and three ninety nine for each additional for two days of education. And I can tell you, we have a great time. I, I want you to. I want learning it to be fun, and I, I also want you to see the success, and not from me, but from other people, so that yeah. you can see that whatever you're doing, whether it be ortho or perio or endo, that you see that other people are doing it too. Yeah, it's awesome. Lori, I can't thank you enough. We're going to have you back again and again and again because every time you're on, I learn yeah. that much more from you. And now I got five more things to put in here. So <laughs> stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. And uh, thank you guys for watching the Best Practices Show. If you enjoyed today, which I know you did, do us a favor, just hit the share button, share with your friends and colleagues. And then also keep sending us suggestions for shows that you want to see, whether it be with Lori, things that you'd like to learn more about. We're going to keep having her back. We'll ask her the tough questions and then she can provide the answers. And uh, until we see you next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.